Hi everyone, my name is Ibn and welcome to a brand new episode of How Do You Do? As I promised, I made another episode for the series and this time around we're gonna take a look at St. Reginald Zoo. Um, I'm going to show you the process that I made between the first version, which we're gonna take a look at now, and the version that I showed in the previous episode of St. Reginald Zoo. If you haven't seen that series yet, you can find the link to the playlist right here. And we have a brand new episode on Just Goron's channel today. Go watch it because there's going to be a spoiler of that episode in this episode. Well, to get started, we're gonna take a look at the old version of the gift shop and I will point out some of the things that I liked and some of the things that I obviously didn't like and changed. So one of the first things that you can notice is that the layout is a little bit different. This, um, this gift shop was already, I believe, a year and a half old by now. So there were a lot of pieces in this um, one that didn't survive. I made these penguins, I made these ostriches and these lemurs, red pandas, but all of them really didn't live up anymore with what I wanted. So that was one of the first things that I scrapped. Uh, we also have a lot of better pieces to create cool, um, cool shirts and other t types of clothes. So that was, that was one of the things that I was going to throw away. Um, and like, I, as you can obviously see, it's a, this is a super dark place. Um, and one of the most important reasons of that is this. So I had this roof piece over here and um, I did this to hide all of this. Now, this is something that a lot of people do and that's certainly something that I still do from time to time and I should, really should stop doing that. Um, and it's one of the, those things that Mike told me. He was like, you have to stop trying to hide the cool roof shapes um, by just placing in a flat ceiling. Um, these roof shapes can be intimidating. It sometimes is a bit hard to work with, um, but the, the idea of let's just slap a low ceiling and get rid of it um, often leads to results that aren't as good as they could be. And I when, you, when we'll go back to the current file, you'll see that there's a massive improvement between it, those two. So here's like one of my first tips in this series. I know this is like a kind of tips and tricks tutorial series that isn't a tutorial series. It's all over the place. But like one of the first tips that I got from Mike and I'm trying to implement more is to stop trying to hide the roofs um, by doing a flat ceiling and just try to incorporate the ceiling shape, uh, the, the roof shape into the ceiling. It isn't always going to be easy. It isn't always going to be uh, possible, but at least try and you'll get a much better result. So that was the gift shop. Um, and we'll take a look at some of the other stuff in this zoo. This zoo is about, this current file is about a year and a half old right now. And some of the things that I changed, you can already see this, there was no interior for this area. So you can see this was just all, um, yeah, just weird terrain and stuff like that. These were um, done very well by Mass Bandit. He laid, he put a um, plaster piece behind this to create the effect that there is indeed an interior, but that it's just hidden. Um, and of course, I wanted to add my own interior. What I also did was I changed this ticket booth and we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at it in the uh, new, the current file um, to create a more realistic setup. And we'll just take a look at this right now. All right, we are back into the latest file and we're taking a look at the tickets building. And as you can see, there's already a big difference because now the guests actually go and walk up to the ticket booth as if they are buying a ticket to then go to the entrance. And how do you achieve this effect? Well, it's quite simple um, and it's a, a super easy trick. So what you have here in, these, um, in this building is that we have these little zoo entrances. Instead of making a path that goes 
to the zoo entrance and then continues back further down as you would usually usually make your zoo entrance what you can do is simply put a zoo entrance like this so you place the piece and then you you grab a piece of path and let the guests continue like this by doing so the guests will simply go to this um, specific ticket booth and will just continue walking along the way that it can continue to the first habitat with that you can easily create the illusion that the guests are walking towards a ticket booth bumping against it paying a ticket and then moving to the entrance now as you can see what i also added were these little um, overhangs and um, i did that because i actually went inside this building i took a seat and one of the first things that i noticed that without it there's a hell of a lot of sunshine right into your face and I'm trying to design everything that I build from a realistic perspective, as realistic as possible. And when I see one of these things, I, I always think, okay, well, how would I be? Well, probably this would have been designed without the overhang. Um, and when people would start working here, they would easily end up saying, okay, this isn't working. We have the sun in our faces all the time. We need to fix this. And that's when they add the overhang by adding the overhang. The sun is no longer in our faces, of course, the light from the um, underground lamps is still uh, reflected on this piece of glass. But this way the sunshine isn't right into the face of um, people who sit there to sell tickets. To make this awning a little bit longer, I simply added some of these European flags. If you line them up right, you can easily make this work better because, again, without them, this still wasn't enough. You still had the sun in your face, not as much as before, but still enough to for it to be annoying. So um, that's why that's one of the reasons why I added this to the um, tickets building. Continuing on, one of the things that I did uh, was upgrade this area. You saw this in the previous episode. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, and one of the builds that I really like is this. I made this little table and it's a table that I've had for a while now. And it combines basic shapes with font pieces, which is something that I'm really fond of. So I'll take this new world circle, which I really, really like and really use a lot. And what I simply do is I line it with these little um, full stop pieces and by using these full stop pieces it looks like there's a tablecloth on top of these tables and it actually gives a very nice effect so this is how I made the table other than that it's just a simple cable pieces to make it look functional um, other stuff that I did was your typical um, uh, these little holders I try to play a bit with the position of the font pieces so that it gives the idea that there are multiple pieces in uh, napkins in these little boxes. This was made with, um, for those who don't, uh, didn't spot it, this is made using two, um, two drinking um, bowls from the habitat tab, but simply sunk into each other with free build which allowed me to get this really cool effect. And I always use these European LED sign caps um, as a way to represent glasses. I, I really absolutely adore that. Um, another nice little thing that we had in this episode that I didn't talk about was this little coat rack and these little ATMs disguised as, um, yeah, just slot machines, which I also really like. Continuing on, we have this. This is also what we had earlier and just Goron does this way, way better than me. But if you're wondering how these, pa these paper pieces are made, these are simply a bunch of um, font pieces and uh, just slid into the table a bit like this. I really like the way this works uh, a lot. All right, let's continue on and take a look at the new um, 
Toucan's gift shop and see how I made some changes to the previous version. But first of all, as you can see, what I did, I got rid of the low roof because as I told you, it made the room room feels super small and dark and that was not what I wanted. When you go into a gift shop, you don't want to feel the depressing feeling of everything cramping you um, and that's just not what, I, what you want to have um, in these areas. You want this to feel fun, you want this to feel light, so I decided for that instead. That's also the reason why I went for these, um, these kind of holders here. You sign. Uh, kind of cabinets instead of the, uh, the previous versions because this one allows for much more light to pass through everything it lets the room breathe a lot more uh, than before and um, I, it just get, gives a very cool effect one of the things that you might have noticed is something that I try to do as much as possible I try when I use blueprints so I use this amazing blueprint by Ricey um, I, I love it so much. It's one of the best things that was ever made for custom gift shops. Um, and what I usually try to do is if I see a blueprint piece, I will use it the way that it was made. But often I will try to dissect it and I will try to look at it and I will be like, okay, how was this made? How could I make this myself? And what can I do to spruce it up a bit? Because I don't, if we all use the same blueprints over and over and over and over again, all our zoos will start looking the same. But if we kind of mix our own things into it, we can make it look a bit different and get specific stuff for our specific zoos. And that's how um, we did it, how I did it like here. I just grabbed the blueprints from Goron, mixed it up with this uh, blueprint and we got this nice effect and that's a massive tip that I can give anyone like if you use blueprints there's absolutely nothing wrong with that I know some there are people who are like nah you shouldn't bu use blueprints you should always build everything yourself I'm completely against that you should always use blueprints if you want to um, but the good tip that is very nice to know is that you can take blueprints and you don't have to use them the way they are intended. You can pick them apart, you can take a look at how they are built and you will learn things about how you could build and maybe you'll see stuff that's like, oh, I could use this in the build that I was working on. Um, I've learned so much from blueprints, uh, especially the ones from Ricey, the ones from Lions, the ones from Lider. Those are incredible and they, um, they just help so, so freaking much. Another nice thing that I included was this little uh, coat rack. I'll drag it outside for a moment so that's easier to see. Um, what I like using is these little pieces. These are pieces that are from the screen mount poles and you can find them right here in the um, media devices tab. These are these screen mount uh, items and those are items that a lot of people skip because they don't know they exist or because they haven't seen them yet but they can do really cool things you can get really cool poles um, this has a really cool texture at the bottom so you can do a lot with this um, and how I made this is very simple I just use these decorative light brackets uh, so that you essentially can create a nice circle uh, let's take a look. What else did I do? Um, I think you've pretty much seen everything uh, that I've already done. Most of this is from the workshop. Uh, these are easy to pick apart. These are just uh, gutter pieces. So you can just grab those from the workshop and take a look. Um, so I think we'll move on to the Flamingo exhibit. For the Flamingo exhibit, I wanted to go for something super simple, something that was um, not over the top. But one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted these little islands, these concrete islands, in which I could put um, some trees, some bamboo, some stuff. And I knew that I was never going to be able to make a perfect trim like that in a perfect simple circle using um, the existing pieces. So what I did, I simply uh, grabbed a fountain piece that was a nice circle. I dragged it underground, put some mulch on it, and it works out perfectly. 
So yeah, I did this on several places and it works out super, super well. Another thing that I really like doing is using decal pieces to create the effect that there spin, uh, that the floor is wet, uh, especially given the fact that these animals can go outside and inside use uh, in, and, and can walk around in water. Of course, the inside would be wet, so you take some decal pieces to create the wet effect. Um, and to close off this episode, we're going to take a look at a build that I've made in uh, for the, today's episode of St. Reginald Soon. If you haven't seen that one yet, it's on Just Goron's channel. Go check it out right now. Um, but I, I'm gonna show you what I made for that. So this was your spoiler warning. This is what I made. Um, and for the longest time, I've been wanting to make uh, these kind of indoor playgrounds, um, but there was always a piece missing. With the... Um, Euro pack, we finally got these uh, panel pieces that look like, with the right color, looks like plastic, plastic tarp pieces, which I really wanted for this effect. We then also got these mesh pieces from the Africa pack. If you want to have smaller mesh pieces, as you can see, you just overlay a few of them and you can make smaller squares if you want to um, but I still didn't have everything that I wanted I wanted to create these little poles that you see in uh, these playgrounds and usually it's very difficult to create that effect because usually they aren't really cylinders they are cylinders with these little rows in them um, and I didn't know how to recreate that so to show you how I, uh, I've been working recently, I created new filters for myself. I've made circles and cylinders so far. I need to do that for squares, rectangles and everything in between. Um, but that easily gives me a list of all the cylinder shaped pieces in the game um, so that I can quickly uh, work with those. So um, when I started working on this, I started looking at all the cylinder pieces that I have and I took a look at this and I was like, okay, first of all, it also needs to be flexicolor. So now I can easily say, give me a flexicolor cylinder piece. Um, and I started with the bamboo because it has this shape, but it's an inverted shape and it's way th too thick. And the thin versions are then too thin. So that wouldn't work at all. Then the concrete pillars are just way over the top. These gutter pieces would have worked well, but the only downside is that they are completely flat and the texture wouldn't work out either. Then I was thinking about using the lead pieces, but again, those were too thin and I was slowly running out of options. I, for a minute, I thought I'll just use these raw pieces. They are the right thickness. Um, they don't have the texture, but eh, it is what it is. I, I, I don't think I can use anything else. But then it dawned on me when I was making this list of uh, cylinder pieces, and I think it doesn't have the flexi color tag right now. But then I saw this, this piece. And when I was messing around, I saw that if I stack two of these pieces like this, you get this nice, cool, rich effect. And that was exactly what I needed. So. All I had to do was just stack them up, turn off the light, and I could essentially create entire towers out of this. So as you can see, this is basically just made out of these cool light pieces. So again, this brings me back to the tip that I'll probably give in almost every episode of How Do You Do? Look at pieces for the shapes they are rather than looking at what the piece is exactly. I when I first looked at the piece, I knew, okay, that's a light, but now I know that piece can allow me to build cylinders and shapes that are really, that are really unusual with these bridges. So yeah, um, that's the best tip that I can give anyone. Just look at pieces for their shapes and not just for what they are. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something from this. And the next episode on, of this series will be in four weeks as the next episode on my channel will probably be Kowali. Um, so the next one will be about my next Kowali build, which I can't really tell you about yet because you haven't seen 
what um, I've been up to yet and what Rudy has been up to, but it's going to be really great. If you haven't watched the, the uh, St. Reginald Sue episode, go do it now and especially go watch the one from Just Goron because it's absolutely fantastic and there are some really cool things in it. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe, like and comment and see you in the next video. Bye everyone.